the message tonight, and I hope you're prepared for it. Anyhow, uh, you see a lot of TV shows probably uh, that tells you uh, and telling you to end it. It says that plant a seed. And you know, that's what a lot of these TV evangelists, they ever won uh, out there telling you how important it is to plant that seed. And you know what they're talking about on seed? If you will, look at the address on the screen and send a thousand dollars. That's exactly what you hear on TV. And I'm telling you about the word in this Bible. And I'm telling you what they're going to send your soul to heaven. That must be a secret. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you tonight what will send your soul to heaven. And you know we need to be ready for that. You know, because God is coming back one day. We don't know what day or what hour. But I'll tell you this much. It is, it is written. Yes, it is. That part of the word in this little book right here. It is written. Nobody, no man knows that hour. No man knows the day. But it's in the Bible that he will return. He's going to come. You can look for it like a twinkling of an eye. It'll be in the middle of the night. Or it could be in the daytime while you're asleep. It could be any time. You know, we could have this this thing to end before this service is over right here tonight. We none never know exactly. And I know everybody tells them. You know, I've heard that all my, I have heard it all my life. But I can tell you, the times is telling you right today exactly the Bible is being fulfilled. You know, the earthquakes, the mighty storm. I'm talking about storms we never expected to have is happening today. We have one here in our area. And there was one the other day when that storm come through here. Out of Louisiana over there. Those people was just devastated over just like it happened here. And you know, we never know when that time might show up again. You know, we don't know what type of tropical weather we might have. We don't know what's going to happen. But I tell you, it is ordained that there is going to be a time for this world or this era here to end, you know. And we don't know exactly what time, but I do know it's going to happen. You know, I, I, I'm going to talk to you about the seed uh, uh, is the Word of God. Right. That's what that seed is. It's not that planting a seed of a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars or, or whatever you might have. It's not, it's not, that's not planting a seed right there. But it's, I'm not saying you not to do uh, like donations. I'm not telling you that you can cut all this giving to the church out. I believe that the party should give to the church. Each and every one, if they've got it in their pocket and they're uh, free to give, you know, I believe in supporting your church. I believe, believe in supporting any of the ministry out there as long as it's uh, for the purpose of God. Our only one God. I'm not talking about other gods out there. You know, I don't believe we should support, support any of that. We should stay clear of it. Anyhow, we can go to Luke 8 and 11. 8 and 11, Luke. It's only one, one verse there. And it tells you right here in this Bible a parable. Now the parable is this. The seed is the Word of God. That's what that seed is. It tells you in the Bible here. And all you have to do is look it up. And you can see it. It's written in there. The 
principle of sowing and reaping is known worldwide. You may be seated. Sowing and reaping is known worldwide. And you've heard the saying, you're going to reap what you sow. That's true. Whatever you sow in life, you're going to reap. You know, if it's bad stuff, you will reap bad stuff. If it's good stuff, you can reap good stuff. You know, it's known that people do reap what they sow. There's a physical sowing and reaping, but there is also a spiritual sowing and reaping. If you sow that spiritual life and spread it to another one out there, then you can reap for that too. It's also that. The preaching of the gospel will bring you forth, bring forth fruit. The preaching of this gospel will bring forth fruit. And each soul that's saved, you're collecting that fruit right there. Every time you see a soul saved out there. We can't save them, but we can take and teach them where to come. Show them, tell them about where they can come. We can't save them. I can't, I can't, you know, save anybody. All I can do is just tell them. I can pray with them and pray for them. God will save them. And whenever you go to God and tell him what you want, he'll fulfill your need as long as it's within reason. He's not going to give you no foolishness. Now, there's people that ask for a lot of foolishness out there. But he's not going to give you that. You know, I've, I've planted gardens time and time again. If you don't have that seed put in the ground just right, it won't, it won't bear. And you have to put it in the ground a certain depth. You have to be sure you got water. You have to have fertilized. And you know, that's the same way you do with these people. You know, we get in church. You know, every Sunday, we have this group of people that have come. And we have to put the fertilizer out for them people. You know what that fertilizer is? It's this gospel. You know, that's where the fertilizer comes from. It's the gospel. And once you spread that gospel, it'll grow. If you don't spread the gospel, it's going to quit growing. And you know where it's going to go then? It'll be back out in the world. We don't need that to be out. We don't need them being out in the world. They can be just standing around out there and there's so much world that's going to eat them up. We don't need that. Without a seed, there will never be a crop. Without that seed, you'll never get a crop. That's the same way with these people out here. If you can't get to them and plant that seed, you'll never get the crop. And I'm talking about the crop. There's a crop coming in this church, you know. Each and every, each and every soul that comes in this church, that's part of our crop. And we've got to get them in here. We've got to tell them the good news. Don't spread bad news. Spread the good news. And without the word of God, there will never be a spiritual harvest either. We have to have the word of God to have that spiritual harvest. If you ever want to be with a good harvest, you have to have the God in your life. Go to 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4.
second Corinthians 4. And we're going to go 1 through 7. Corinthians 4, 1 through 7. Amen? Amen. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But, but have renounced the hit, hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in the craftiness, but handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, if our gospel be hid, I don't want to hide the gospel. I'm, I'm wanting to talk when I get out there in that field somewhere and give them what they call the good news. It is hid to them that are lost. It is hid to them that are lost. Why would you want to hide this from somebody that's lost out there? We want that person not lost. Bring him in. To whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who in who is the image of God should shine off unto them. For we preach not ourselves. But Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servant, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in our earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. It's not of us but it's of God. Sinners must be converted by the word of God. And we have to give them that word and talk preach to them and pray that they'll be converted. Go to Psalms 19 and 7. Psalms 19 and 7. And it says here, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the souls. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the, making wise the simple. Got another one you can go without the word God of God there is no faith. And that's in Romans 10, 13 through 18. Romans 10, 13 through 18. 
Amen. Amen. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And have and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? That's in the Bible. If they haven't heard it, how are you going to believe in him? He has to be heard about it. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Without some preachers out there. And you know, I'm not talking about preachers like my brother up here and me. Everybody in this church is a preacher. He has called each and every one of you to spread the good news of this word. So you see, I'm not the only preacher in this building. Everybody in here is a preacher. And how shall they preach? Except they be sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For he says, said, Lord, who hath believed our report, so that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went unto all the earth, and their words unto, unto the ends of the world. The word has been put out. It's all over this world now. You can hear it. It don't matter in many, many different languages. In Africa, Mexico, New York. China, you name it, them countries has heard about Jesus Christ. And they know all about it. It's been spread around the world. Having the seed is not enough, it must be planted and sown. That's exactly right. You have to plant it. I can take and put every seed I got that's for a garden out there and put it in a jar and not break the ground and till it. But I won't get nothing to come up from that seed. That's the same way with you out here. If you don't take that seed and spread it out of that Bible, you ain't planting. So you have to plant that seed in order for it to grow. That's another one we go to is in Psalms 126. Psalms 126. Five through six. Now listen closely to this right here. Because if you're a Christian, this is going to happen to you. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weep, weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again, the rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Mm -hmm. That is so good right there. Bringing the sheaves with him. But you have to work at it. You can't just sit on your, your rump 
and not get up and move. It has to be worked at. A person cannot be born again without the Word of God. They have to have the Word of God to teach them about being born again. Go to 1 Peter 1. 22 and 23. Verse Peter, chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto the unranged love of the brethren, see what ye love one another. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. It tells us right there. Incorruptible by the word of God and the seed you planted right there. The seed must Healthy sound for it produced for it to produce fruit. It has to be a healthy sound. The seed has to be healthy. And we're talking about the seed right here in this Bible. When you bring it out to them, everything has to be healthy in order for it to produce. The Word of God must be preached faithfully. God's Word is not rotten. <laughs> no, that Word is not rotten. There's a lot of other things can be rotten. But it could be the man out there that's not wanting to deliver the Word. Being a rotten scoundrel and just, and just deliberately not wanting to take and Spend the time. We have preachers. The pastor and I know one. Uh, really, we know one that was a, a very good preacher at one time. Mm -hmm. But he's turned out rotten. Yep. I know him too. You know? <laughs> but we don't, we don't want to uh, uh, have rotten preachers. We want that preacher. I would love to see that preacher that we had at one time there. Come back and be a faithful preacher. Take care of that rottenness in you. We don't need that rottenness. A seed will always produce its own kind. You know, I'm going to take you now to a scripture. And that's going to be right in the head of the book in Genesis. Where it says in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 12.
And the earth brought forth grass and herb, yielding seed after its kind. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So you see, that tells you that if you've got an orange tree, the seed in it's going to be an orange. If you've got an apple tree, the seed in it is going to be for an apple. So it tells us whatever kind it is, is what we're going to have. The same seed that produced Christians almost 2,000 years ago still produces the Christians in the church today. That was 2,000 years ago or better. It could have went further than that. I'm just going by what I've heard. You know. Of course, that 2,000 years has been heard since I was a little boy. So it could be 2,000 and 100 years. <laughs> so, it happens, you know. But we're going to go to uh, Acts 11. Acts 11 and 26. Amen. And when he had found him, he brought him into the church, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So we have that same Christian that was produced to those disciples. And then and the same Christians today, the beginning of it come with those disciples. Every one of them. Has the seed been planted and watered in your hearts? I'm asking each and every one of you. Has that seed been planted in your heart? Will you go and try to plant that seed again out there, wherever you may go? Talk good about everything that's happening in the Bible, about what's happening in the church, how good it is. We want people to know that there is some good that comes out of the church. It's not just this, but every church. It don't matter if it's black church, white church, whatever. Good can come out of that church as long as they believe in the King James Version and as long as they got Christ in their heart. They can't be having these uh, uh, devil worshipers. You know, we don't need none of that. We need to have... Christians, one that belonged to Jesus Christ. Are we sowing and planting the seeds in other hearts? I know that I, I try to do every chance I get. Uh, it's hard for me not to do it, you know. Uh, I can get around a group of people and it just automatically comes out of me about Jesus Christ. It automatically comes out of me to invite somebody to the church. That's just a standing thing with me. I don't, I don't, I don't know why 
uh, I, I, I work at it so hard, but I do. I wish that the people I invite would show up. Because if it did, I would have to build another addition on this thing. We'd have to build a couple of wings out here and build a little further out. But I'd love to see it happen. And it ain't impossible. It's just one of them things that people just don't believe that the Lord is coming back. This is, this is where their mind should be. It's when. We don't know. But when. If you're lost tonight, you don't feel like you got enough of Jesus, tonight is a good opportunity to come and talk to Him. You can Pray about it. You go to the altar. If you don't want to go to an altar, you can come step forward. And some of the prayer warriors we have will come in and they'll lay hands on you and believe and trust that God will touch you and prepare you for that time <coughs> that we're going to have to leave this earth. Because it will be no more earth. It will be devoured. I'm going to say with the fire. Because it speaks of that in the Bible. A little further over. Toward the end of it. Right, right before you get into Revelation. It talks about it. And James, I believe it is. I think it's the second chapter of James that talks about it. And the earth will be devoured with a fire. And it could happen at any time. I've mentioned this time and time again. I've never preached on it, but I've mentioned it. If you take an automobile and drain every drop of oil out on it, what's going to be your chances you'll make it into town? It's the same way with us. If we take all of God and Jesus out of, out of our lives, the chances are we're not going to make it. But anyhow, the earth, they're drawing as much oil every day. They're pumping billions and billions of barrels every day. And with the population in this area right here that is drawn, I'm talking about just astronomically, the people that has moved, and the chances are, if you move out here, what do you have to do? You will have to put your water well in. And as they pull this water from the aquifer out there, pretty soon it's going to quit running like it was running a hundred years ago. It will, it will stop. So we've got so many things that... Uh, is happening and is being fulfilled in the Bible, you know, like the, like the earthquakes and the wars and all. It's scary. But like I say, if there's anybody out there that's lost, they feel like they need to find Jesus. Tonight is tonight. The night of salvation is at hand right now. These altars are open. If you feel like you're going to make it to heaven and you don't want to come down here, that's up to you.
I'm going to turn it over to my pastor over there and he can dismiss us. Before we dismiss, uh, I'd like for all of us to stand. And let's join our hearts together and pray for Sister May. I tell you, I, I feel the need, the urgency to, to pray for her tonight. I don't know what's going on, but I know God knows all about it. So let's just pray for her. Father, we Lord thank God, 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 Lord, and we ask you, yes. God, Special whatever going on your sister may, God, 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 I know that you're able oh, to, I know to that you touch you this tonight, God. God, 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 to the full heart, Lord. Help her strengthen her, God, right now, Lord, as go through this hard situation, God. Lord, we pray God, we put our trust in our in faith in you, God, and God, you that you would just touch her heart and her life tonight, God. Direct his hand and the past 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 and the Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name we pray. Yes, God. Touch her. Thank you, Lord. Touch her, God. Give her 